Thank you so much for buying this uh, kit and joining, joining me so that I can take you on your patchwork and quilting journey. Whichever of the kits that you have bought, the same principles are going to apply. You can see behind me the four different colorways and the pack that I have in front of me is a vintage one. In the pack, you have uh, all of the fabrics. In fact, you've got everything that you need to complete the project. I would suggest that you do need some additional tools to make life easier for you. The 45 inch, uh, sorry, 45 inches, that'd be too big, a 45 millimeter rotary cutter, a self-healing mat, as large a one as you can fit into your workspace, I would suggest, and the Creative Grids six and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler. Now these are the basic tools for patchwork and quilting. I really do suggest that if you can buy that set. The other thing that I use quite often uh, and suggest that for accuracy is a good thing to have is the Creative Grids one inch by 12 inch ruler. This one's got my name on it. It, uh, it uh, can be easy to misplace. So let's get back to the kit. In this kit you have everything you need but you don't need it all to begin with. So let me set aside the bits that you don't need and I would suggest you do the same. You need your Gutterman, quilt, uh, your Gutterman sewing thread. You don't need the quilting thread at this point. If you have a new machine, you shouldn't need to put a needle in it. If you have uh, you've got a machine, go and change the needle. Otherwise, we set that aside. The quilt label, you could get a head start on this and write on it whatever you want to do. Perhaps something like Sewing Street Sew Along January 2021. This particular one is for my granddaughter. So I've simply written and then embroidered. You have the hand sewing needle to do that. Again, this is going to be the last thing that you do, so you can set that aside. This fabric you need, this fabric you need, this one you need, and you do need to cut this. But the two larger pieces you don't need at this point. You, This is your backing fabric and your wadding. Those are not in play today. So these are the fabrics. If you then go to your instructions, you have a colour picture which will help you identify which fabrics are going in which position. You have a set of instructions. Tear the back page off. This is the really important one for what we're going to do at this point. Keep the instructions, top page, this is what you are going to cut from each of the different fabrics. We've given you a little box so that you can either write in or pin a little piece of fabric in so that you know which fabric is in which position, okay? When fabric has been in a pack for a little while, you will find that it has some creases in it. Before you cut anything, it is always important to get those creases pressed out, which is why I would recommend that you, try, you, if you don't have, buy some Best Press. This is my little sort of pocket size one that travels around with me. Um, you can get it from a number of uh, places, but this stuff actually works. So at this point, I'm going to press these creases out. And while I'm pressing, I shall chat to you about something that's a bit more interesting than pressing. Uh, fabric, whenever it is being uh, manufactured, goes through a number of processes and obviously goes through some uh, very big machines. And it is hooked onto those machines so the selvages, the edges of the fabric, are really to protect the 
the main part of the fabric. So you will find that the selvage edges have gotten some little holes on them. It'll be easier to see on the pattern ones. So let me just press that. With um, this vintage one, some of this fabric is tilde fabric. Some of it isn't, but some of it is, and that's just a, gives you that nice little ditzy flower. Whenever we talk about cutting fabric, we are always cutting from selvage to fold back to selvage. As you can see here, you can see there are little, little some holes along here. And you will also find that the selvage has a tighter edge to it. Some people will tell you cut the selvage is off before you do anything. I tend to say let it stay on for as long as you can. With the, I've given that a reasonable press, I am going to have to press each of these fabrics as we go through to cut them. Uh, just one other thing before we move on to, to the uh, actual cutting of the fabric. Make sure that you have the folds of the fabric towards you. I'm now taking you through how to cut each of the fabrics. In most cases, the light fabric is the background fabric. We refer to that in our set of cutting instructions at the beginning of your instructions as color one background. Now, if you have the batik one, this is going to be the green fabric. Your set of instructions, the thing to do is take the last sheet of paper off, just tear it off. We put it at the back for a reason so that you can do that. And we're then looking at um, color one cutting diagram. You will see that the fold of the fabric is closest to me and the selvages are at the top, or, uh, at the far side. The cutting mat, while it has measurements on it, are not to be used, okay? The only reason you use those markings is to make sure that you're square. They are not accurate because uh, with the, these cutting mats, they can warp, uh, they can just bend in the heat. It's not a good plan. So what we're going to use is our acrylic ruler. Now, the first thing that we need to cut are eight three and a half by six and a half inch rectangles. Now, what we will do is Looking at our, our ruler, we are going to line up a line on our ruler, which we know is square. These fabrics, we did our best to cut square, but there has been a little bit of a wobble, I think. So this is what fingers are for. So if you actually go across and count, you have a half, then one, two, three, so three and a half. That is the black markings on your creative grid ruler if that's what you happen to have. But as I say, use your finger. This is where you measure twice, cut once. So good habits with your rotary cut cutter. These are meant to be sharp. They work better if they're sharp. But equally, you have to be careful with them and you have to make sure that whenever you set them back down, you have the guard around the blade. They can be dangerous. So, you don't want the ruler to slip. So, put your ha hand on here, not too far away so that you're not overstretching. Start the blade off the fabric Downward pressure is what we're after, not sideways. So you see the angle that I'm at? The pressure is going down. Okay, blade retracts back in on this particular one. If it didn't, then you would be pushing the blade cover back on. The piece of fabric that is important is that which is below the ruler. So don't move the ruler until you're sure that you've cut all the way through the fabric. So with a bit of luck, with one little 
um, hesitation back here, I have a nice clean cut. So what I have here is three and a half inches. I'm going to do that again. We're going to cut three and a half inches once more because if you look at our diagram, it's saying we need a second strip at three and a half inches. So we'll repeat the process. We're making sure that our, mar our marking on our ruler is along the fold, that this is very clean up along the edge here. So I'm at three and a half. Again, put your hand on here, blade out, downward pressure. Now, as I say, this table is a little bit tall for me, so I'm just going to stop here and move forward so that I am putting more pressure on the end of the ruler as I stretch across. Okay, blade cover back on. I now, I know I cut all the way through that, so I was okay lifting my ruler. That first cut, I know that the first edge was not square. It just happens whenever fabric has been folded. So what I actually did was I cut it a little bit big so that whenever I, I can go back and I can tidy that edge up and I'm sure that I have an accurate three and a half inch strip. When you're cutting this at home, it is a good idea to get yourself at the right height. Now, dining room tables, while they're very useful, are not actually the right height. They're bad on your back. So I would suggest, if you can, use um, a worktop in your kitchen. That uh, proves to be quite useful and not so bad, sore on your back. At this point, I need to remove the selvage because I do not want to include it in any of my measurements. Now, fortunately for us, as we were saying, we need eight three and a half by six and a half inch rectangles. The, that means we can just use the full width of our ruler. So I have straight line going across the bottom of my fabric here. I have a straight line on my ruler going across the top. I always find it easier to go through two layers of fabric. I get a better grip and I can have more downward pressure. And we have the first of the pieces that we actually want. I have two three and a half by six and a half inch pieces. Now I need eight of those so I will just do so I now have six pieces cut the next things, thing that we need to do along this one is we are going to cut some four and a half inch squares that's the second thing uh, on our list of cutting requirements for the background fabric. So I'm, that is eight pieces cut. Now these are precious pieces, so at this point, I would suggest you want to put those in a little bag uh, in preparation for the live show. We're now going to do our three and a half inch squares. So again, we know we have three and a half inches here because that's what we cut earlier. We're getting our digit out again and we're going one, two, three and a half. We can also see that our three and a half inches is on the edge there. As I say, not everyone will have a creative grid ruler. If you don't, just carefully count. So we need four of those. That was two. Again, you always have to be square as well as level. You need to be square. You can have measurements that look right, but you can actually be, um, they can be diamond shape as opposed to squares, and that's not what we're wanting. 
I also like to be using as much of my fabric as I can and keeping my spare pieces as big as possible, any leftovers as large as I can. So we're now on um, the third and fourth items. So I want four two and a half inch squares and I want two seven, two, two and seven eighth squares. So let's do the two and seven eighth squares because that sounds a bit more difficult, doesn't it? So at this point, I would turn my ruler round so that I'm looking at whole numbers. So I'm looking at the three line because two and seven eighths is one eighth less than three inches. So that's what the little lines on the ruler are, these little ones, these are eighths. Okay, so again, one, two, and then counting across, we have seven little eights. Okay, so I'm still, I'm just going to cut down from the three and a half inches that I had earlier to two and seven eights. So that's a little bit of scrap. So we now have two. We just need two two and seven eighths. So here we go, making sure that I'm level and square. There we go. Now on our instructions with these two and seven eighths inch squares, we need to actually make them into triangles. These are right, uh, these are half square triangles. It's a good thing on your board at this point to line up uh, the tips of the square along one of your lines. Then uh, on your ruler, most rulers do have some angles on them. This just allows you a second check to make sure that you are at a right angle. You do have to manually organize this diagonal, but you can make sure that you're square by having that 45 degree angle run along there. Again, I find it easier to cut through two. I wouldn't suggest you cut through more. So one cut up through there, and I have my four half square triangles. So I'm now just short of two of four two and a half inch squares. Now we so that you have confidence in your cutting, it you can either use up this little piece here, or you can cut a two and a half inch uh, cut across here. It's good practice, let me say. So let's go for a two and a half inch cut across here. So again, we have the fold towards us. We're going to cut across from fold to salvage. We are looking at two and a half inches. So one, two and a half. Turn it round, clear the salvage because it is a little bit tighter and it has those little holes in it and you don't want those to be included in your measurement. So you can either turn your ruler around. I would suggest that you should decide which way round you're going to use your ruler and stick with that. Otherwise, at, so at this point, I'm going to count one, two and a half. And I need to cut four of these. So that's two. And I'm going to do the same again. Now, as you can see, you do have leftover fabric. So don't panic too much if something goes a little bit awry. You should be able to put most things to right. 
So we're now moving on to colour number two. In each of the kits, I think I can probably describe this as the most, uh, the one with the most pattern on, except for the modern kit, in which case it's the dark blue one. So we have our cutting diagram here. Yeah. And we have our list of pieces that we want to cut. So in this instance, the first thing is eight three and a half inch squares. Remember how we do this? We have our line on our ruler across the fold and we are at one, two, three and a half. Cutting from fold to salvage. Now, just to make it a little bit easier for me, I'm going to take the second cut across at this point as well. And then we are going to go to each of these strips and sub cut them as we see in the diagram. So you see the pressure on the rotary cutter is going down, not across. And remember, each time you are making sure that the blade cover is around the blade. Um, you can see very clearly on here that the salvage is not something that you want to be including in your measurements. So you make sure you're square so that you're cutting the salvage off and you're leaving yourself with a straight line. So if I go down the list that I have here, I'm looking at eight three and a half inch squares. So each time I cut, I get two. So one gives me two, okay, so that then gives me eight three and a half inch squares. They are going with my bundle of things that are precious. I now need to do, what do I need to do now? I need my two inch, two and a half inch squares. So what I can do, oh, you know what? I didn't pay any attention to my cutting diagram which is a little bit lax of me, but never mind. We, I'm just showing you that it is possible to cut these in different ways, so don't panic if you go wrong. What I have here are two of the four six and a half by three and a half inches that I need. So my second strip, I'm going to do two of the, the two remaining rectangular pieces. First the salvage comes off. Six and a half is easy because it's the width of the ruler. So I have my four three and a half by six and a half inch rectangles. I need 10 two and a half inch squares. So what I can do now is take the piece that that we had previously cut at three and a half inches and we're going to cut it down to two and a half inches, making use of the this piece. Okay. So again, I'm lined up with my fold towards me. I have a straight line there, I have a straight line there, so I know I'm square. Downward pressure. So we are doing 10, two and a half inch squares. And the final two. Okay, I now have finished 
all the pieces that I need for my colour too. You might want to pin a little bit of fabric on because people do sometimes forget which one is fabric one and which is fabric two. Okay, so we might want to let that sit on there. Pop a pin in it, yeah? Pop a pin there. That's what um, pins are for, really. Ah, I can use a piece like that, a smaller piece, so that's going to sit there. Okay, we're moving on to our colour three, which is the nice coral in the vintage kit. So this is for the colour of the star. So it's lemon for the batik, it's the red, it's the bright colour, okay? Again, selvages away from me, fold towards me. And in this instance, because I'm, we need to cut the matching triangles to go with the background triangles, the first thing we need to cut is that pesky two and seven eighths cut. So make sure that you are getting yourself aligned. Now, I suggest at this point you are using your creative grids ruler with the whole numbers towards you so that those are the ones that you can see and are reading. So we are going to one inch, two inch, and then seven of the little markings. Okay. Hand in the middle, downward pressure on the rotary cutter. Pause, don't panic, nothing's going to move unless you move it. And we know that has come away clean, so we know that we are safe to move the ruler. Um, we have uh, a salvage that is uh, pink on one side and white on the other. That can be quite confusing, but let's get rid of it. So all that we need from here are two two and seven eighth inch squares. So that's going to leave us with, let me get that. So we only need two, so we only have one cut. So one, two, and then seven little eights. One, two, seven little eights. Um, remember what we did before? We put this on one of these nice vertical lines so that we believed we were square. And what we're going to do now is use the 45 degree angle on the ruler. We're going to run that down through the points of the square, making sure that that line is running along the side of the square. Only cut these in two layers of fabric, no more. There we go. There are my triangles for my star. The remaining cut for this is nine two and a half inch squares. So I now know I've got a nice clean edge that I've just cut. So I'm going to use that as the side to measure from. So two and a half inches, two and a half inches. So um, one, two and a half. Okay. I just need to, just the smidgen, there we go. Smidgen's a great word, isn't it? One of those very descriptive words for little things. Okay, I have a two and a half inch strip. I now need to cut nine two and a half inch squares. Well, I reckon I'm going to cut 10, don't you? Because I'm cutting these in twos. So two. Four. Every time I put this uh, rotary cutter down, I'm making sure that the blade is covered. Six. Eight. 
and OK. Let's do one. And then we know we actually have nine, not ten. So I simply am going through one layer of fabric this time round. And those are our nine squares. So all of our interesting pieces of fabric are cut now. And that only leaves us with the binding fabric out of your, your bundle of fabric. So that's the best way I can describe it. Um, the one that's left. Sounds a bit sad, really. The one that's been left behind. Anyway, this is for your binding. So we're back to making full cut, uh, width cuts. So again, we have the fold towards us, selvages at the far side. So we are cutting three two and a half inch strips across the width of the fabric. If you see an abbreviation that's W-O-F, that means width of fabric. Some patterns will describe it as that. We have spelt that out for you so that there's no um, ambiguity. Okay, one strip. That was a nice straight edge I had to start with there. And again, I'm square. I'm level. And the final cut. Now I would, since you're going to cut these in advance of the show, I would suggest that you put these safely in a little bag, keep them somewhere um, flat, don't get them scrunched because you have taken the time to press them and to get all these measurements uh, as accurate as you can so it makes sense to let just keep them flat, set them away. Because you're doing this in advance I really do suggest that you pop some little bits of fabric um, on these little squares so that you know which is sitting in which position. Yeah, so just something like that, and obviously the in this one, the, the white one. So that is all your cutting done, ready for the show. I'm going to move on and show you how to set up your sewing machine. We're moving on to how you set up your sewing machine now. Now obviously everyone is going to have a sewing machine and they're all going to be slightly different. So I'm going to try and talk this through in general terms. If you have your machine manual, get it out and have a read through because it might just help on a few, uh, few of the things that we want this machine to do to help us in our sewing. You're going to put um, a spool on the top. Most machines have little arrows on them that show you a, a couple of hooks to go round. You're going to come down. You're going to go through this, uh, this arm here. You're going to come back down. And it's always really important, even in the very old machines, you're going to find that there is a little hook just above the needle, really important that you get the thread behind that hook because that brings the thread straight down the shaft of the needle and that helps the machine make its stitch. You have the correct thread in your pack. We have included um, a neutral coordinating thread in each of the packs. I happen to have a grey one on here. I want you to wind a bobbin off this this cotton spool. We're going to use this throughout our piecing. We're going to have the same colour top and bottom. And we're also going to use this in the bobbin whenever we move on to quilting. So wind a bobbin. Whenever you're winding a bobbin, make sure that you wind your bobbin at full speed. That puts some even, well, it'll put an even tension around the bobbin. The only other tension that the bobbin is under is what it gets from that tiny little hook um, that is uh, in the bobbin casing. If you have any problems with this, do have a look at your manual. Generally, there is a winding mechanism on the top of the machine. 
you want to wind at full speed. Now, it's really important that you can sew a quarter of an inch seam. Some machines will have the ability to move the needle position. Some you will be able to buy a quarter of an inch foot for. And then there are some that neither of those things are going to happen. So let me show you what we can do about that. So let's start with this machine will move its needle. So um, you find the appropriate mode on the machine and the, mach the needle is going to need to move a little bit to the right. So towards this side, yeah, towards the throat of the machine. This one, I'm going to move across to about there. And this is one of the occasions whenever this little a uh, thin ruler is really useful because what this lets me do is to measure from the point of the needle to the edge of the foot. So I don't have to have a quarter of an inch foot, I just need to have a quarter of an inch distance between the point of the needle and the edge of the foot. So if I pop this in here, I'm a little bit wide at this point. I think I need to go just to there. And I can see that between there and the edge of my foot, I have a quarter of an inch. So that was easy on this machine. Okay, other machines, quarter of an inch foot. Some machines um, are not going to allow you to do that. The thing to do then is to measure from the point of the needle to where a quarter of an inch is on the plate of the machine. And a piece of masking tape or electrical tape and just put it down along here so that you have a, a line to run your fabric along. The stitch length on the machine, you want that to be at, a, um, at about a 2.4. Again, calibrations on machines vary a little bit, so you want to be a 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, depending on the machine. But that's all that you need to think about at this point. If this is something that you find you're enjoying doing, then you really need to consider buying a dual feed foot or a walking foot for your machine. They don't generally come with a sewing machine, but they are of great assistance whenever it comes to the quilting of your table runner. They can be quite expensive, but, you know, it's a considered purchase. But to get us through this point, you're going to be able to use your ordinary machine as you as as it comes because at this point all we're doing is a straight stitch